check this out guys found something cool um, again it's another confirmation of the time that we're in and what we're looking at uh, we can go literally all day on that kind of stuff but look at what's going on here and this is this is the situation like I've talked about here you can't get into other books that aren't canon uh, and take them as gospel but there's tidbits of information in them that confirm or support biblical scripture and and what's coming and what we see coming and so we take all this stuff with a grain of salt but we compare it to scripture to see what scripture says I'm going to read to you a prophecy from the book of Enoch now chapters 2 and 3 and anything else that might be there we don't take those as legitimate because there's other stuff going on uh, in those the handwriting is different a lot of stuff is different about those and the the attitude in them changes but the first one is almost generally accepted that Enoch probably did write that one. We still don't take that as gospel, but we can find evidence and little bits of detail in there that help us understand other things. Now that particular prophecy, uh, you can find that in 1 Enoch 89, uh, called 70 shepherds and cast those sheep to them that they might pasture them. And he spoke to the shepherds and their companions, Let each individual of you pasture the sheep henceforward, and everything that I shall command you, that do ye. And I will deliver them over unto you, duly numbered, and tell you which of them are to be destroyed. Uh, you, you will destroy, and he gave over them those sheep. Sounds pretty alright, you know. Dealing with sheep, and God's going to tell them how to deal with the sheep. Can this apply to people who are saved or people who are? So in 1 Enoch 90, it says, and I saw, this is Enoch talking, and I saw that till that in this manner, 35 shepherds undertook the pasturing of the sheep and they severely completed their periods as did the first. And others received them into their hands to pasture them for their period, each shepherd in his own period. Uh, then we have another couple of pieces here. Here's in 1 Enoch 89, the eyes of those sheep were blinded so that they saw not, and the eyes of their shepherds likewise. And they, i.e. the shepherds of the sheep, delivered them in large numbers to their shepherds, i.e. the overlords of the shepherds, for destruction. And they trampled the sheep with their feet and devoured them. We can go back in history and look at when the Jews were sent off to Babylon. And that's what that's referring to. And then here in Enoch 90, uh, and I saw until... That seven or that twenty-three had undertaken the pasturing and completed in their several periods, fifty-eight times. Now that the thirty-five has already been done, and you can count if you go back to uh, Ray, Ray starts with an R and count forward. You count forward to when they went to Babylon. Count forward thirty-five shepherds, thirty-five leaders. The, then if you then you have to go back when they back in 1948 you count forward trying to find the 23 well there was a very interesting point because a lot of people say well there's three different ways to to count and you don't know which one that you need to use because back then it was kings they didn't have kings after that they had prime ministers and governments and this and that but i did find something so the rights and duties of kingship uh, reading through this, and there's all kinds of references in here, and uh, I'll, I'll link these in the video so you guys can go look at them yourselves. It's just interesting stuff to go look at. Uh, kind of breaks the monotony of talking about the same old thing, but you read about the kings and what they had to do, but listen to this. According to the Torah, kings were not in charge of the judicial system. Calls for an independent judiciary of officers and priests in which the high priest serves as the chief justice. Consequently, the kings of Israel are subject to Yahweh's law via an earthly court. This would also be considered a Sanhedrin council. And when these courts failed, the prophet stepped in. When David commits adultery with Bathsheba and engineers the murder of her husband, the prophet Nathan condemns him. Although Yahweh forgives David when he repents. When Ahab condemns Naboth to death on false charges of sedition against the monarchy in order to seize his property in Jezreel, Elijah condemns both Ahab and his dynasty. Although when Ahab repents, Elijah grants him the mercy to die so that he does not see the downfall of his family. So we see that the actual government is the shepherd. 
It's not just the one person, the leader, that's doing the shepherding. It's the council that's behind that leader that is doing the shepherding. And I'll, like I said, I'll link this article in the description that you guys can go read it on your own. It's just an interesting study to get into. So counting forward, what government would be count forward? Well, when they became a nation again in 1948, the first thing they did was put up a Knesset. And the Knesset is uh, as a legislative branch of the Israeli government. The Knesset passes all laws, elects the president and prime minister, although the latter is ceremonially appointed by the president, approves the cabinet, and supervises the work of the government. In addition, the Knesset elects the state comptroller, also has the power to waive the immunity of its members, remove the president, what did we just read in the other article, and the state comptroller from office, dissolve the government in a consecutive vote of no confidence, and to dissolve itself and call new elections. The prime minister may also dissolve the Knesset, however, until an election is completed, the Knesset maintains authority in its current composition. So we see almost the same description, almost the same description matching them. When you start in 1948, because we can go back and we can look that, you know, and count the 35. Uh, I think Steve Ciccolani's got a good study on this, but you can go back to, was it Ray Boehm, I think, and count forward the 35 shepherds, the 35 governments, and then they go into imprisonment. Then you pick back up in 1948, and you can see in the Book of Enoch there's a break in in the in the shepherding. You start at 1948, you can count 22 Knessets. So the next one is right now. But they did, you know, because Menyahu didn't get it at the beginning of the year. That was the 20. That was supposed to be the 22nd one. And so now they're working on it right now. This should be the 22nd one. And then there's going to be a 23rd. Because that's what it says here. I saw the 23 had undertaken the pasturing. So during the reign of the 23 puppet shepherds, Enoch describes the destruction among the lost sheep of Israel, as well as the building and destruction of the first and second temple in Jerusalem. Enoch also foresaw that, blinded by the ignorance of God's will, many from the tribe, 12 tribes of Israel will be scattered abroad. We see that. And would become the victims of many enemies during the times of the two temples. We saw all that. Enoch also foresaw the coming of the one-horned ram, or unicorn, who would open the eyes of the blind sheep and lead them to salvation. Enoch's vision d uh, disclosed that there would be a period of time when the followers of this one-horned ram will be persecuted and killed without mercy. The enemies of the one-horned ram will attempt to destroy the ram's teachings and followers, but will not succeed. We will discuss the spiritual and temporal meanings of the unicorn and what Enoch the unicorn means to Christians in the next chapter. So, interesting stuff. I'll link all three of these articles in here so you guys can check them out. But it's very interesting to track some of this down because there's so much stuff hidden out there that we don't know. Things that we... You can spend a thousand years studying the Bible and still never learn all that secrets. After this, Enoch foresaw that twelve more shepherds would arise to govern over Israel. He therefore foretold the birth of Israel as a nation in modern times. Sadly, Enoch tells us that this group of twelve final shepherds in Israel will do more damage to Israel spiritually than the 58 shepherds, uh, bad shepherds who governed the country long before them. And I saw the man who wrote the book according to the command of the Lord, till he opened that book concerning the destruction which those 12, 12 last shepherds had wrought, and showed that they had destroyed much more than their predecessors before the Lord of the sheep. And I saw till the Lord of the sheep came unto them, and took in his hand the staff of his wrath, and smote the earth, and the earth cleave asunder. And all the beasts and all the birds in heaven fell from among those sheep, and were swallowed up in the earth, and it covered them. Sounds like tribulation, doesn't it? Listen to this here. The predecessors spoken of in this prophecy were the shepherds who came before the emergence of someone Enoch calls the Lord of the Sheep. This Lord of the Sheep is none other than Yeshua the Messiah, the one-horned ram. Since these twelve shepherds arise after the death and resurrection of Yeshua, 
and the destruction of the second temple in 70 AD. So here's your 12. These last 12 must belong to the modern state of Israel. Ironically, the 23 governments are mentioned with the 23 shepherds. These 12, Netanyahu is the 12th. I think he's the 12th. Uh, and these last 12 belong to the modern state of Israel, a nation now ruled over by secular-minded prime ministers. Since these kings are humanistic in their outlook for Israel, they have not shepherded the people into drawing closer to Yahweh or his following his laws. As a result, many Jews in Israel no longer have faith in their Heavenly Father. Go to Tel Aviv and you'll see that for yourself. Yahweh will therefore judge these shepherds severely and cast them into a fiery abyss. According to the book of 1 Enoch, they will be cast away with all the fallen angels who defiled themselves with women, and anyone else who is found guilty of unconfessed sins such as bitterness, lack of forgiveness, lack of repentance, or impotence, impenitence in the end of the world. Uh, and I saw till a throne was erected in the pleasant land, i.e. Jerusalem, and the Lord of the sheep sat himself thereon, and the other and the other took the sealed books and opened those books before the Lord of the sheep. And the Lord called those men the seven first white ones, and commanded that they should bring before him, beginning in the first star which led the way, all those stars whose privy members were like those of horses. And they brought them all before him. And he said to that man who wrote before him, being one of those seven white ones, and said unto him, Take those seventy shepherds to whom I delivered the sheep, and who taking them on their own authority, slew more than I commanded them. And behold, they were all bound, and I saw, and they stood before him. And the judgment was held first over the stars, and they were judged and found guilty, and went to the place of condemnation. And they were cast into an abyss, full of fire and flaming, and full of pillars of fire. And those seventy shepherds were judged and found guilty, and they were cast into that fiery abyss. And I saw at that time how a like abyss was opened in the midst of the earth, full of fire, and they brought those blinded sheep, and they were all judged and found guilty and cast into the fiery abyss, and they burned. Uh, oh yeah, they even give the list of shepherds here. So they have, an up, have updates in here. This assumption is not supported by Enoch's prophecy. According to Enoch, they will all be cast into hell. Most from among the seventy kings, however, will perish without repenting of their sins. Uh, one easy way to test the legitimacy of Enoch's prophetic vision of the 70 shepherds of Israel is to see how closely the prophecy of the 12 last shepherds applies today. We can do this by counting how many prime ministers have ruled in the modern nation called Israel since its inception in 1948. Because before that, all the way to 70 AD, there was no, no Israel. Uncannily, 12 men have served in this office so far, as shown in the li following list. Uh, James Johnson, a fellow scholar friend with the Sudius of the Book of Enoch, provided me with this list. So this list is updated with year and death highlighted in red where applicable. So you can see the whole list here going down for those last 12. And look who the last 12 is, Benjamin Netanyahu. The preceding list clearly shows that 12 men have served as Prime Minister of modern Israel, with some of them serving more than once. Adding these 12 to the 58 prior shepherds, that's the 35 and the 23, of Israel mentioned by Enoch, we find that 70 men have already served as shepherds of Israel. Since there are to be only 12 shepherds of modern Israel before all 70 of Israel's shepherds are judged, then the time before the end of this present world system must be very near. This was, when was this updated? Looks like it was at least updated sometime from 2016 on up. Because, uh, yeah, Ariel Sharon died in 2014 and Shaman Pierce died in 2016. So this was at least from 2016 on forward that they've updated this. Um, sorry, shepherds. During the 12th shepherd of Israel's rule, Enoch prophesied that the persecuted sheep that follow the one-horned ram would be given a great sword with which to fight their enemies, as shown when this prophecy is focused on again in the next chapter. This sword is the Holy Spirit. After this, the Lord of the sheep will smite the earth with his wrath, destroy the wicked, set up his own kingdom, and rule until the last judgment. 
Therefore, the twelfth prime minister of Israel is likely to be the last one to rule before the second coming of Christ. Now, when we take that information there and go look at what's going on over there and look at what's unfolding over there, it is very clear to see that this this matches and that of where we're at. If this prophecy is true, it means that Yeshua himself will serve as the thirteenth leader of modern Israel during his millennial rule. This fact again shows that the thirteenth member of any group can often turn evil into good and replace wickedness with righteousness. In fact, the only major biblical exception to that rule was possibly the 13th patriarch in the line of Adam through Seth. This was Arphaxad's uh, purportedly apostate son, Canaan, who after the Great Flood was supposedly instrumental in corrupting uh, Sethite sacred astronomy into the astrology first taught by the fallen watchers prior to the flood. Of course, this tainting of Canaan as evil by the Jews uh, could have been because they no longer remembered that the gospel in the stars was centered on Israel and the coming of their Messiah. Fantastically, Benjamin Netanyahu's stint as Israel's prime minister was due to end in September of 2010. After a period of only 18 months in office, but Netanyahu won the elections held in the late 2010s and will hold the position of Israeli Prime Minister until 2014, unless he dies. So here's a 2017 update, so here we have another date marker. Netanyahu is re-elected. Enoch's prophecy of the 70 shepherds is to continue to hold true. Since he got re-elected, we're still on the same number 12. Either there will be no more Prime Ministers of Israel after Netanyahu leaves office, or else Israel will be governed by one of its former prime ministers again after Netanyahu until Yeshua returns to the wicked one of battle of arm again. Listen to what this says. Listen to what this just said. However, if Enoch's prophecy of the 70 shepherds is to continue to hold true, either there will be no more prime ministers of Israel after Netanyahu leaves office, or else Israel will be governed by one of its former prime ministers again after Netanyahu until Yeshua returns to vanquish the wicked at the Battle of Armageddon. And who are they calling to take over for Netanyahu because they're trying to indict him? Gideon Sa'ar. Since he has already been in office since 2009, Benjamin Netanyahu's position as Prime Minister is due to end someday soon. And it hasn't. It's still going. They are, this like this was all done and uh, updated in 2017. Um... Somebody soon is showing the book to the language of God and humanity. The Feast of Trumpets prophetically correlates with the rapture. However, the rapture is even more closely tied to Pentecost or Shavuot and to the summer harvest season in Israel. So there is a possibility that the rapture could occur someday soon. These end time heavenly signs are primarily explored in chapter 8, 11, and 12 in the book. It's, it's interesting to note if we go back and look at these holidays and how they unfolded this last year and look at the things that happened on these holidays and happened around these holidays. It's interesting to catch, to see this stuff. In addition, this book has shown that there are many other prophetic implications that the first rapture may occur sometime soon. These include the prophecies in Psalms 108, 109, and Psalm 110 through 118. Indeed, Psalm 111 through 117 appear to be tied to the seven years of tribulation. Really? I'm about to go back and look at that. Uh, the update, though this assumption appears to have proven incorrect, okay, so they realized that was wrong, all believers have been experiencing increased persecution and tribulation during this period. In addition to these prophecies, I have shown how David or Daniel's prophecy of the 70 weeks has several different prophetic implications. Uh, then there is the 2010 end date of the Great Step in the Grand Gallery of the Great Pyramid, and the subsequent revelation I was given of the antechamber, which shows that the Great Tribulation may be shortened to six years rather than seven. I don't know if it'll be shortened to six years, but several things may blend together to create that effect. Well, also, we're going to know that time is going to change, too. Days are going to be cut in half at some point. However, keep in mind that there is likely to be two raptures, with one before the Great Tribulation and one occurring at its end, when the two witnesses are resurrected. This possibly is explored in Chapter 11 of this revised book. Uh, or fascinatingly, of the twelve final shepherds of Israel, only two of them, besides Netanyahu, are still alive, and both have the first name of Ehud. Furthermore, one of these men, Ehud Olmert, has cancer and is not well enough to serve in public office. So if Enoch's prophecy 
of the last twelve shepherds is true, and I believe it is, then the second coming of Christ must be very near indeed. What prompted me to share this excerpt from my book was a video I saw. Oh, Steve Ciccolani. <laughs> he saw a connection in the book when Enoch, Benjamin, Netanyahu, and Donald Trump based on a fascinating number code tied to that. So he saw the same information that I had seen. Now something here to pay a close attention to. Just a second, let me see if that's a... No. So something interesting here to pay attention to is... Who would be Ehud in the current, where's he at? There it is. Who would be, who is the other Ehud? In in uh, Israel right now. As a leader, as an old leader. Let's go back up and take a look real quick and see. Who's who's Ehud? Here's two Ehuds. Oh wow. Ehud Barak. Hmm. Okay, so here's your homework, <laughs> brothers and sisters. <laughs> Go look up Ehud Barak. You know, everybody's been having these dreams about Barack Obama. Hmm. I don't know. That's that's that stands out. But if he's the only one that's alive, if Olmert is is has cancer and probably won't make it, and if he's sick enough, they're not going to put him in there anyway. Ehud Barak. It's be a guy we need to look at for. Possible Antichrist. Don't know. I'm not saying it's gospel, but I tell you what, a lot of things point to it. This is the kind of stuff that I get caught, these rabbit holes that it takes me down. And I'm absolutely not saying this is gospel, but wow, well, you know, talk about stuff that matches up. I will be looking into that. Uh, okay, so I'm going to link this in there so you can read it in its entirety because I already found another little path I want to go down. Um, but take a look at this and see what you think. Um, and do some studying into this because what it does, not to not to change what we believe, but to help our understanding. And, and what it does is it creates more confidence because if we're seeing these things and we're seeing constant confirmations of these things, what what would that tell us? Same thing Jesus told us. When you see all these things begin to happen, look up for your deliverance draws an eye unto you. Love you guys. I bless you all in Jesus' name. I'll see you in the next one.